everyone and welcome back to my channel divinely guided tarot if you're new here my name is angel and i'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading this message could be for all signs so please remember to take only what message resonates with your particular situation leave the rest behind and as always guys thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow it is greatly appreciated um, I really feel it coming in, you know, that split right there with the, the house and the sudden wealth. It's like your spiritual home is going to be overflowing with divine blessings and just abundant wealth. And I'm also seeing abundance in spirituality. Um, your cup's going to be overflowing. I don't know who that's for or who this message is for, but I'm digging it. I'm really hoping this is for a lot of you. So Holy Spirit, please come through, please shield, guard, protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful subscribers. Please help me with messages that they need to hear at this divine right time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, let's take a peek and let's see what this abundance is going to be for this house that I'm um, picking up on. Now, we have message of concern. You guys know I don't read the Kipper, uh, the Kipper deck, excuse me, in reverse, but it did flop out and it was very prominent to me. Like somebody is up in arms, they are in over their head and now they are concerned. So I am going to leave this in the reverse position. Your abundance coming in is basically a death sentence to somebody who didn't want you to be in that position of power or in that position of divine blessings and wealth because the very opposite is going to be coming true for them. So that's telling me that this is somebody who played around in your energy. Maybe somebody who tried to take a masculine away from you. Maybe you had eyes for somebody. This person took that person away from you. Or maybe this masculine here is the one that is in concern right now. Like they're really kind of going through it right now. We're going to go ahead and dive in a little bit deep to that because it's not 100% clear. If this is a masculine who is concerned for the things that they've done wrong to you, or if this is a feminine who took a masculine away from you, or a person of interest away from you, basically got to your guy before you could get to them, wove a whole bunch of mysterious stuff, and then bam, like false person all over. Um, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this guy is innocent, or if he's just... Oh, I fell for the okie doke and now I want to come back after I caught the mange, you know, and I want to come have you make it all better for me. Yeah, they're like, I want you to make it all better for me because I see you've got your crap together. I see you working really hard on yourself and on your energy. And I see you, you know, making a career, making a living off of just doing the right things and being obedient to your mission. i got to get into that before you know my chance expires so we're talking about somebody here who may be seeing you as a divine opportunity because the evidence of all of your hard work is starting to come through you've been crowned you have your wings you've been upgraded you've been elevated before your peers okay so this is not something small this is something huge this is something that was written down a long time ago in the book of life that you were destined for this abundance coming through. Hidden treasure indeed. The only way you would be able to come across this divine blessing is by following the pathway that you did. As uncomfortable and unpleasant as your pathway was, there are great rewards at the end of that buffet line. Okay, so when you... Um, Think about, I, I don't know if it's the same for me, if I've had the same experience that a lot of other people have had, but let me tell you a little bit of background here to try to explain why light workers are the way they are, why their paths are so hard. Why do some people have it so easy when some people have it so hard? Why is something so unfair over here, but this person doesn't deserve to have any good things happen to their, their pathway and they just get everything handed to them on a silver platter. Now listen guys, 
There's a reason for that. When I was going through my ascension in the very, very beginning, God took me back to a conversation I had with him um, at his throne. Before I came to planet Earth, before planet Earth was formed, God showed me a contract that I signed with him of what my pathway would be. And let me tell you something. When I say we choose our own destiny, it's 100% true. I bellied up to that buffet, and that's what it looked like, a buffet table full of experiences, um, emotions, um, you know, hard stuff, easy stuff, fun stuff, joyful stuff, stuff that makes you cry, stuff that makes you weep, stuff that makes you fall apart, stuff that's hard to get through, anxiety, fear, depression, like the buffet table is loaded with all of these different emotions in every single experience mankind could ever have. From back in the beginning with Adam and Eve all the way up to what hasn't happened yet, okay? All of those choices in a grand buffet line. Now, when you belly up to that buffet, you choose how hard your life is from the beginning. Now, at the very end of this buffet, all of this hard stuff, you know, undigestible food, you know, stuff that's hard on the gut, stuff that's hard on you, you load it up on that because the the benefit of loading up on some of that heavy stuff, the harder stuff to handle, is you get your rewards at the end, towards the end of your lifespan. Some people choose to skip this part of the line and they go straight to the good stuff or the moderately, you know, medium kind of experiences and up. Nothing difficult, nothing painful, nothing traumatic, nothing hard. Those people have their blessings now or have their blessings halfway through their life, like after they graduate or after they become an adult. And then there's those other select few that are like, I don't want to experience anything hard in my life. I'm going to go straight to the end and only eat that divine ambrosia because I'm worth everything. And God's like, go for it, kid. But that has its consequences too. You get all of those blessings now. Everything that you could ever have good happen to you, you're going to get them now. Maybe you're growing up in a wealthy household where you're a spoiled brat, you know? And you get, you're, you're pampered, you're, you get everything you ever want, you're entitled, you don't ever have any hardships in your life. And then bam, when you become an adult, it's like everything that you had that was spoon fed to you is now completely gone. And now you have to survive and you have no idea how. So there's consequences to everything. And can you say honestly that you may know a person who lives on either end of those spectrums? People that you feel are entitled, that don't know the true meaning of work and labor and how to be humble and to be grateful for the things that they have. No, you're absolutely right. God planned it that way in the beginning. When I signed my contract, I chose hard stuff at first Because if I just take my medicine and get it done and over with, I want to be able to enjoy the blessings in my life. And I know many of you have experienced that same premonition or that same understanding. Maybe God put it to you in a different way. Maybe you didn't see a buffet table. Maybe you saw a room full of gifts and opportunities. And God asked you honestly over like sipping coffee on a terrace somewhere, you know, (laughs) seeing six moons in the background. Um, You know, this is something that you and God decided a long time ago. And God wanted you to decide the start and the end and the middle of your life. And when we look up at the sky and we say, why God, why, when God, when, Sometimes we need to look within ourselves to say, God, what did we agree to? Remind me of that. What's my purpose? What's my plan? Okay? So I don't want you to get trapped in anything negative or actually be concerned because the message of concern here has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the enemy playing in your energy. Okay? We are talking about somebody who left... This is possibly a romantic connection that got connected to you in some way, shape, or form and wove the sun, the moon, and the stars for you, made themselves the main man in your life, the one and only. They could have probably even pretended to be a twin flame to you, 
but really they're an agent of evil. This is stranger danger. This is a soul snatcher. This is somebody who would rather hitch a, up to your wagon because they see a bunch of goodies in the back of the hall that they could go ahead and throw off the back end so his friends can go ahead and take advantage and then he looks like the savior. You know, they're showing me that movie, American Gangster with Denzel Washington, and how that gangster, that, that mobster-style guy was standing in the back of a poultry truck of a stolen turkeys, and he's throwing turkeys out to his neighbors and his friends, and there's a mob of people around him, and they're all praising him for everything he did good, but you got to realize he's like a Robin Hood, you know? Rob from the rich and steal from... From uh, you know, that steal from the poor and give it to the poor, you know, it's vigilante. It's somebody who's trying to trick you into thinking that they're a good guy, but really they're not. They have ulterior motives behind everything that they do. Even if there's a little bit of truth woven into this guy's story that he's going to come up with for you. Put your spiritual eyeglasses on and put your spiritual hearing aids in. Read between the lines of what this guy is saying and not saying. Okay? Because there's somebody here who made a mistake, left you behind, and is trying to come back into your energy. And I'm sorry, but every single one of you that I feel this resonating with, you don't want the past coming back into your life again. It's like this guy's been toying around with you. Like, he'll leave your life and then he'll be like, I'm your friend. I'm still, we're still friends though. And we can, you know, if you're dating somebody, they shouldn't be jealous and upset that you have a, a friendship with your ex-boyfriend. I'm sorry, that's, there's mind games being played here. This guy doesn't want you to be with anybody. So he inserts himself as somebody that you trust and that's somebody that you've known longer than your future boyfriends. Do you see how this guy's playing? It's a twisted psychology game. There's something really messed up with this guy. It's like this guy thought the grass was greener on the other side, but he didn't realize that the only reason it was greener was because it was fake, right? It was AstroTurf. Now they see the fruits of your labors. Maybe they told you you were going to be nothing, that you would never amount to anything, that you would never um, have anything ever again, or that you couldn't be anything without them. Like without them in your life, you were nothing. How many of you have heard a guy tell you that? <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> hey, Ma, look, no hands. <laughs> I didn't need a toxic man in my life, and you don't need a toxic man in your life. Now listen, this guy is not the only one who's concerned. This guy got hitched up, left you, or left you hanging, or chose somebody karmic over you. Somebody who may have been working and manipulating things in the background, pulling strings to intentionally trick this guy into not wanting to be with you and being with them. That's kind of the storyline that I'm feeling here. So it's not just you that, or him that's concerned if you're even going to take him back. He's worried that he's going to receive karma for the things that this person, this other third party did into his life and lied to him about because he knows he got tricked out of his, his Ten of Cups, his Ten Pentacles, his Ace of Cups, his Ace of Pentacles. He knows he got tricked out of this and he knows it's too late, but it doesn't mean that he's going to not try. He knows he messed up, but he's going to use equally deceptive tricks to try to trick you back into being with him. He's trying to keep you on the hook, on the line, so you don't go anywhere. He's saying, listen. This unique personal expression, he's like, there's nobody out there like you. And there's nobody out there that can make you feel the way I make you feel, baby. Please. Are you serious? Like, he's identifying that you're the one in the million diamond in the rough. Well, he was accurate there. 
but he's saying he's your counterpart, that he is the twin flame. Listen, ladies, 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 listen. This main man is the trickster. Of course he's going to say he's your twin flame. Oh, don't worry, baby. I've got you. It's the end of the world. Do you really want to die a virgin? Like, it's that kind of guy who would do or say anything to get his way. He is a narcissist, a closet narcissist. He thinks he's holier than thou. He thinks that he's a good guy. You know, this is the kind of guy that's like, no, I've done bad things in my life, baby. But, you know, I did a real, I did a really lot of good things in, in the past month. I saved a lot of really cool guys, a lot of guys with some good souls. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll get to heaven. I'll get to heaven. This is that guy. Psh, please go sit on the porch if you can't hang with the big dogs, pal. Seriously, give that line to your karmic ex-girlfriend. <laughs> no divine feminine in this group is believing that nonsense. And there's my personal opinion, guys, coming out, that this guy is an emperor in reverse. This guy is going to pretend to be the bee's knees. This guy is going to pretend to be your one and only. Look at my rock hard abs. Only your divine counterpart can look this sexy and hot. Yeah, bull crap. You're still in reverse. Okay? You're coming at this lady wrong, mister. Don't you know nothing? You don't know nothing. You think that identifying my collective as unique and special, like divine angels collectives last unicorns are all channeling in here and they're like i see you unicorn i am your counterpart and you're like no you're a demon in reverse my divine counterpart is another freaking unicorn and he's majestic <laughs> you know <laughs> like and put whatever mystical creature you want on yourself like i'm a dragon I'm a dragon. I'm a dinosaur. My partner's a dinosaur. I mean, you know who your divine counterpart is. It's going to be somebody that compliments you, not somebody who lies and pretends to be you, you know? Mm. Message of concern. What's coming up? Water signs coming out. Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. Um, this could be you. This could be the man that, that left you for this karmic couple. But regardless of who this is, I am looking here and I'm seeing a lot of emotion. Drowning in pain. Underwater. Unable to breathe. Immortalized like porcelain dolls. Like you, their terror and their pain is going to be frozen in time. Underwater. It's like... And I don't know why this is significant, but this has popped into my head at least three times today um, when considering this energy that I've been approached with. The, the people that are... the I don't like doing this, God. I don't, hold on, guys. I don't want to reveal what the punishment is going to be because I, 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 don't, I don't like messing around in that kind of stuff. Guys, you're going to have to forgive me. I am not going to tell you what this person is going to be doing or the type of punishment this person is going to get. I don't like looking into that side because I'm not worthy enough to judge. I'm worthy to capture the people that are attacking me and submit them to trial um, at the throne. You know, I can be a bounty hunter all day long, but I, I can't look at the, the judgment. I can't sit on that trial and watch what happens to them. It, it, it hurts me too much. It puts me... I have to share that pain right along with them. So I refuse to, to do it. But let me tell you something. Whatever the punishment is, it's going to be frozen. Meaning it's going to be permanent until they pass away. So whatever energy gets called on to them in this season for justice for what they've done to you collective, they're going to be stuck, frozen, under the water, Frozen like an ice cube. Their pain, their emotions are going to be locked in that state for the rest of their lives. Does that mean they're going to suffer and torment um, for interfering with you? Probably. They tapped into forbidden knowledge, meaning that they were playing around with energy that didn't belong to them. Okay, this makes perfect sense. Why? 
what you just experienced me doing is me being tested by God. God gave me an open door to look in, a crack in a door, not wide open, but a crack. And usually a crack is an invitation for me to look in, especially when I do readings. But even knowing, like the sign on the door says judgment, punishment, vengeance, retaliation, like God's vengeance, God's retaliation, God's justice, God's judgment. When I see that sign on that door and that door is cracked, that's a, that's a red flag for me. I cannot energetically step in and look at the judgment of others because I know I'm not worthy to judge and I can't compromise the integrity of my peace. A judge holds a scar of the people's punishments that he hands down. You have to be anointed to be able to judge. Not everybody can handle that. And not everybody is a judge. Okay? So I was just tested with what I consider forbidden knowledge. Things that I don't tamper with. You will never hear me talk about somebody's judgment or what's going to happen to them or dive into that because I'm specifically told not to. God's very clear on those rules from day one. Somebody was tested with your energy to see what they would do. Would they abuse the knowledge that they gave, that they had access to? So maybe this person saw a peek into your Akashic records and saw that there's going to be a lot of blessings coming up for you, like in this season. But they weren't supposed to know that because they weren't supposed to read somebody else's Akashic record. They were given an opportunity with a cracked door and they failed their test. They didn't pass like I just did. They failed theirs. Their justice is going to be what their actions deserve. Now they're going to be trapped in regret, in emotions. Regret knowing that they saw their future. They saw your future and they have to live with the consequences that they gave you away and threw you away like last night's leftovers in order to find something better. Guess what? They didn't find anything better and now they're trying to come back, but God's not going to permit them because they committed the ultimate crime. They use their power against you. They know what's happening in your life and they're only coming for you because they see what you're going to get. What's in it for me? That's what they said. No, not what's in it for me. My collective is going to keep what my collective's going to keep. And you're going to stick with your karmic nobody. Oh, that's why there's been, there's another layer of concern. He got that woman pregnant for some of you. The karmic woman that he left you for thinking that that was the grass was greener. She got what she wanted. She tried to trick him with having a baby to tie him to her. I think she got what she wanted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mechanical responses. I feel like their relationship is all this. Mechanical responses. We're talking to each other the way that we have to talk to each other because this is what is expected of us, you know. They're making it work. <laughs> we all know how it goes when people say they're making it work. Oh, we're making it work. Yeah, mechanical response. You shouldn't have to make anything work. It should work or you don't go together, you know. Um, <laughs> thank you, God, for, for, for giving us that little bit of insight. I appreciate it. All right, so I want to talk about my collective, my collective moving forward. Holy Spirit, talk to me about my collective. What can my collective look forward to? You could be an earth sign. You could be a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Um, you could have some strong determination to you, somebody who sticks to their guns. So maybe you set up a plan for yourself. Maybe you're following along the lines of a New Year's resolution that you didn't just make this year, but that you made in the last two years and that you've just kind of turned a resolution into a daily habit, a monthly habit, a weekly habit, um, a quarterly habit, 
where you are focusing on just improving yourself, improving your self-worth, making yourself worthy in your own eyes. You're like, you know what? I am worthy to do everything. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to follow God and I'm going to heal and I'm not going to worry about relationships. I'm not going to worry about what man has said I am or am not. I know who I am. I know I'm that rare unicorn. You know what I mean, ladies? You're like, I'm a unicorn. I'm a princess. <laughs> oh, do you remember that movie Kindergarten Cop? <laughs> I'm not a police officer. I'm a princess. <laughs> yes. So Akashic Records has come out here to confirm that everything that we just talked about was correct. But this is an invitation for you to go in and search your own Akashic library, okay? That forbidden knowledge, that Akashic record that was first exposed to this, this person, this male that came into your life, they looked and saw what you were doing and what you were coming up, up against before you did. Now, God's saying, baby... I've opened up the door for you. There is a grand library that is waiting for you to dive in and see what I have planned for you. I feel like some of you are asking for next steps. And I think we're going to stop pulling the oracle cards here. And um, yeah, you're looking for next steps. You're looking in your, you're wanting some help with your Akashic records. So some of you are looking for next steps right now on what to do with your occupation. This could be your personal work. This could be a business. This could be a project. Um, something that you're starting. Something that you're launching. A creative project that you're very fond of and that you're thinking a lot about. Okay, let's talk about it. So, we know that the enemy, that, that your past lover, this past individual wants you wants to be with you now but i'm kind of curious to see what could possibly tempt this individual to come back after they treated you so badly what gives them this confidence like what is the prize at the end of that rainbow that has this guy foaming at the mouth to get to you after he knows he screwed up so bad that he can't come back because he sees you focusing on your future he sees you focusing on your money he sees you focusing on your project your passion nurturing yourself amen okay so what is what's coming up for you let's take a peek at that akashic record and get you some answers ladies holy spirit give us some answers the akashic records are supposed to bring balance into your life understanding divine knowledge harmony you know when you understand who you are when you understand that you're a part of a bigger picture, it somehow brings peace in your circumstance, peace in your life. And that's what this knowledge is supposed to do. Knowledge is not supposed to give you chaos. Knowledge is not supposed to get you hungry for, you know, trying to steal something from somebody else. Um, it shouldn't inspire any kind of jealousy or anything like that. Looking at your own personal record should bring you peace that, yes, I, so-and-so, I, Divine Angels Collective, arranged for all of my life to happen. And while I'm here on earth, I've been in charge of all of my choices that led me from this platform to the next. And I see how my life is balancing out and I can see my past, my present, my future. And now I know what I want to do to bring out the best possible result for me. I see you being very responsible. I see God blessing you with new ideas. In this occupation, the ideas that God is giving you are more like instructions in a manual. So when you have a feeling like, I need to set up a business, and then all of a sudden you're seeing advertisements on you know, commercials that advertise for do-it-yourself website building and it's so easy to start your business and create your LLC and then all of a sudden everything has been made available and easy for you and it like it's all been laid out in a path for you, divine. Some of you already have a lot of this 
precursory business stuff set up already. It's just been lying dormant waiting for God to have you, you know, activate it all. You know, starting that business after you already set up the hard paperwork stuff in the background. You know, I, whatever this is, it's like God has been placing little nudges on you. And right now, there's a nudge for you to start making baby steps moving forward. For many of you, I'm. Sh it's showing like the journey card where the guy's on the platform and he's getting ready to board the train and jump away and then the people on the back of the platform can't keep up with them, right? I feel like you've been making these baby steps on this platform, but God's getting ready to launch you. And I feel like it, it feels chaotic, stressful, but it's not. Once you actually start getting into a routine, so this might be like something that you're doing daily, weekly. Maybe you're delivering messages. Maybe you're doing something that requires you to do a little bit every day because maybe you can't decide or maybe you can't um, do your job and like the job you work at for Caesar and then come home and do your, your personal job, your mission job. You only can commit like a couple of hours to it every single day. But listen... The truth is always going to be on your side. God is always going to give you the right answers. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to fail. Oh, I don't know if I can choose this. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should do this. Or I don't know if I should start this. My gut is screaming at me to do it, but I'm too scared. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't see what's going to happen. This is where God is asking you to exercise blind faith. Okay? God says, I've got you. I've woven the truth on your heart already. It's already imprinted on you. I gave you everything you needed before you came to this planet. You can do the next steps. I feel like somebody just needs to be encouraged and told you had the power all along. There's another Wizard of Oz reference. Guys, I can't stop those Wizard of Oz references today. That movie might be very important to you <laughs> or very symbolic. You may want to check out the previous reading to this one. Um, definitely had the Wizard of Oz in there too. But you already know the answers for the questions that you're asking in your head. Okay? And I want you to... Instead of me calling out some of the answers that I'm hearing, I want you to show some trust and some faith in God that whatever is on your heart is the truth. The, the, the thing that you choose, the answer to your question is the one that brings the most peace. God is saying it's okay to look at your life and, and question it and say, am I doing everything I possibly can? Do I know everything I possibly need to know? God, do I need to even know what the outcome is going to look like in this project that you have me working on? Or do I, is this a test? And yes, guys, it's a test. This is a test of faith. Are you going to be able to not know something and trust God's nudge on your heart? To the brave go the spoils, right? To those who choose a hard life. Remember, you get those blessings. It's worth it. It's worth it. Okay. So, we're going to stop there. Because this was a very clear direction that each one of you that this resonates with today. God wants you to talk to him today about this. And I want you to ask that question on your heart again. And then I want you to apply that answer, that this is a test of faith. God's just waiting for you to choose, okay? And that's something that only you and God can talk about, unfortunately. Like I said, when those doors are cracked and I'm being tested too, I have to, I have to be aware of what the rules are for me. What am I allowed to look at? What am I not permitted to look at? You may have different rules than I do. God keeps me on a very tight leash when it comes to what information I'm allowed to see and not see because I have access 
to energy that is presented to me um, to read for you. These messages are all timeless and they're delivered to you at divine timing. It may be a year from now. It may be after I'm long dead and the, all of these messages are archived. And they're going to be seeing me in the year 2045, you know, or 2145. And my words will live on because they're God's words that are channeling through. And somebody is going to get some help. So guys, no matter where or when you receive your messages, just know that peeks into these Akashic libraries for you. It's a rare gift. And I want you to take advantage of all the information that is being flooded into you. And let me give you a little bit of a, a hint here. Showing faith that you can believe and trust in the things that God's putting on your heart opens up and unlocks more opportunities that require blind faith in order to possess. Guys, we're still learning. We're still growing. We're never done learning and we're never done growing and we're never done healing until we die on this planet and go visit our father in the next life. Guys, Super cool. Super cool to know this. It says, I will carry out vengeance on them and punish them in my wrath. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I take my vengeance upon them. Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 17. You remember that main male over there and that toxic third party feminine that used her feminine wows to, to pull the eyes away? And help that masculine make a bad decision. Wove a whole bunch of lies about you. And now they're both suffering in their karma. Yeah. That's vengeance. God not only protected you from a masculine who was too emotionally insecure to be in a relationship to begin with. Somebody vain and with their ego all up in their butt. Right? But they actually picked somebody that was extremely toxic. Not the earth angel that they thought that they could have with you, right? She made it look like the grass was greener, but she was just deceptive. She was just as deceptive. Ooh, I'm going to I'm going to make the illusion of the perfect woman, and then I'm going to get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to keep him because then he's going to be stuck with me, and then if he won't stay with me, then I got him for 18 years. Child's poor baby. Yeah, yeah. I mean like that's a toxic feminine. That's an evil trickster all on her own. And a trickster being paired up with a trickster is karma. They're going to make each other's life miserable. Their actions will be, or their punishment will be what their actions deserve. And that is scripture right there reminding you that, hey, I didn't forget the people that put you in that circumstance. Don't you worry, chosen one. Don't you worry. Your Akashic records don't include the punishment of the wicked. You are made to see the punishment of the wicked, but you are not meant to know or to snoop in their, in their business and see what their spankings look like. How uncomfortable would it be if you were to stand in the room while God gives a spanking to one of his children that hurt you and actually see that whooping? No. That would just be horrific. I, I can't, I can't even give my enemy at least a little bit of dignity and get punished on his own. I don't need to know what type of punishment. God already told me what his sentence was. So, you know, take that information for what it's worth. Um, if it helps you out, I hope it does. Next scripture. It says, for such people are false apostles, deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then that his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Guys, I can't make that up. We quoted that scripture throughout this entire message. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Their punishment will be what their actions deserve. God is saying, I got you. This person is not getting away with anything. Tisk, tisk. 
evildoers of the world, true agents of evils, people who were strangers in your life and just came in like a wrecking ball. Wow, guys, can't make this up. I love it. Thank you, God. It says, I will be well balanced. Oh, I love you, God. There we go. I will be well balanced, vigilant, and cautious at all times. For that enemy of mine, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And yeah, God wants you to be balanced. That's why he only wants you to look at your own records. And when you are tested, there is nothing that says you will not be tested on a day-to-day -day basis even. But if you sense a trap, go with what God's instruction is. And sometimes you just need to rely on your, your gut instincts because they're spot on. I trusted my gut and I did not tell you exactly what their punishment is going to be for your afflictions, for what they've done to you. The only thing God permitted me to say was that they're... <laughs> their punishment will be what their actions deserve. So I'm going to say that was a fantastic reading. And I'm real excited to see that you're taking such an interest in your future. Such an interest in the gifts that God has blessed you with. I want you to know that you're a very special individual. To have gone through so much. And to still have such a beautiful focus on you that is not based on retaliation, that is not based in woe with me. <laughs> like you are strong. I'm talking to a, a definite earth sign here. An uh, earth sign knows an earth sign. I'm a double Capricorn, sun and moon. I know another earth sign when I feel them in my presence. And I'm going to also tell you, this one might be a this individual might be a water sign, but I kind of feel like this one could also be an earth sign. Maybe strong Taurus or Virgo energy, possibly Capricorn too. So this one could be a, um, you could be an earth sign and they could be an earth sign. Another earth sign could be trying to fight you just as hard to get back into your graces. Remember, tricksters are going to be marked. Their actions will not line up with what they say. Okay, just remember that. And their judgment will be what their actions deserve. So no matter where you are, thank you guys for stopping in today. Um, take care of yourselves and God bless each one of you.